got uh, the honor to introduce my colleague, Kathleen. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Kathleen. Uh, so, Hi. Kathleen Nero um, is um, uh, a long, long-time friend and uh, also a colleague who's working on UX specifically for developer portals. Uh, she's yes. done a lot of, yeah. So she's yes. done a lot of research on um, before she started doing uh, actually um, UX uh, research with customers. She did a lot of research uh, for blog posts and, and a lot of the publications we've done. Uh, and today she's gonna talk about uh, a maturity model that we've been working uh, on at Pronovix. Yes. So, Yes, thank you for the introduction. And um, yes, in this model, we'll, we'll recognize some of the slides that you've already presented and, and work on it a little further, maybe. Yeah, I tried so. not to have collapse, but um, yeah, I hope it was a good good introduction for it. Oh, no, that, it'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> Everything will be included, I hope. OK. Um, I'm going to close my, my video and I'm going to mute. Uh, take it away, Kathleen. Okay. Good. So, hello, my name is Kathleen Delo. I'm an information architect and a technical content writer. Uh, what I do in a nutshell is helping clients to discover user needs and decide how to arrange your developer portal parts, functionalities, and content elements to make them understandable, discoverable, and findable for the main audiences. And apart from that, I like to explore and evaluate developer portal content and architecture and figure out which features can improve the overall user experience. So I'm a member of the UX and UI design team at Pronovix, a company that is specialized in building developer, uh, in building Drupal developer portals. And uh, we can deliver the whole package. We hold strategy and architecture workshops, do UX and UI design, content creation, development, and support. And first of all, thank you for listening to this presentation, but also a big thank you to my colleagues whom I can learn a lot from and who uh, it is a pleasure, a pleasure working with. But uh, getting back to the title of this presentation, a maturity model for developer portals. I'd like to point out that this presentation is based on the work of many, as you will see in a bit. So big thank you to those for providing food for thought. I would especially like to thank my colleagues, Christoph, that you have seen before and Matt, but also Dylany and Laura, as they did an enormous amount of research and worked on processing all the data into digestible chunks of information. I heavily relied on a few webinars that Christoph did over the last few months but more on that later. So our main questions for today are the following. How do you know where the, your developer portal stands? And how do you know what is needed to enter a new stage or new level? Although each portal is always slightly different, for example, regarding specific user groups and overall goals, we are still able to draw some general guidelines, I think. So let's start. We are, of course, not the first ones to come up with a plan to set up a maturity model. In the first part of this presentation, um, we'll look into two models that are already out there. And after that, we'll jump into the three-dimension maturity model. And finally, we'll collect the conclusions. So about existing maturity level tests, I'd like to focus on two models that I found very interesting. But of course, there might be more initiatives already than those two. If you know about a model that you think would also fit here after the presentation, or you have some feedback for us, then please do reach out. So um, if we look at existing uh, tests, there is the maturity portal maturity level test, and there is the test to measure the developer experience level of your developer portal. But first of all, the developer portal maturity level test. So um, Jenny Wenger, there's a portal missing in the title. So Jenny Wenger and Ben Rodriguez, who were DevEx rock stars at the moment they created this model, set up a developer portal maturity level test some years ago. And Karen White revisited this model at the Chicago API the Docs conference last year. Basically, this outline allows you to see how you can follow a step-by-step -step method to grow your developer portal. The main topics are the openness of the portal and the openness of its content, the time a user will need to make a first API call, the extent to what audiences get 
um, what they need and how they get it, the quality of the documentation and of the provided information, and the options that are available to solve problems and to solve questions. Um, if you are interested in seeing how this, the levels work in practice, then please check the link below. A second model was created by Melissa Kendall, a technical writer at Google, and she looked into how to evaluate APIs back in 2016. And she recently shared her thoughts on how to grade developer experience. She does not claim to address all aspects of developer experience, but came up with the following. And the five elements of our grading system are the following. What is the time to first hello world? This item covers the onboarding phase, getting started, tryout, and a successful a first API call, of course. The level of self-service and the way the company behind the developer portal reacts upon feedback from users. Then there's internal consistency, the second item. And that is about the following. Do not only make it easy to onboard users, but make sure that taking the next step is as easy as taking the first one, especially when you as a user want to learn to do new things. Then everything should be consistent and easy. This is connected to the question to what extent the API follow the design standards, of course. The next question is about time to re resolution. And this is about the quality of search that your users get, about finding answers in the documentation, asking for help and getting it easily and fast. And also, for example, an error dictionary. The concept of clarity of communication deals with how fast and regular the developer portal provider communicates about what it is what is going to change and about what has been fixed and updated and how that goes. But also topics such as how an organization reacts upon feedback and ideas from users are addressed here. And then about the documentation drift. When there is no control over documentation, when it's not updated properly or it is missing, inconsistent or incomplete, then that will cause a lot of frustration among your users and reduce the developer experience. We can include the language of documentation here, for example, avoiding passive voice, the involvement of the stakeholders when writing documentation, because of course the business user and developer who consume APIs will need different kinds of information. But also the level of automation is a bullet point in this category. Melissa Kendall, who created the model, outlined each of these aspects into or categories into five levels. And you can find those levels through the link at the bottom of this slide. I think we can say that the above mentioned models mainly focus on the API consumer's user experience, the downstream experience by addressing the user journey steps, discover and research, evaluate, get started, um, develop and troubleshoot, celebrating and sharing things and maintaining the whole, the whole thing. This slide mentions the journey of a developer that consumes APIs. For business users that consume APIs, mostly the first two items will be important, discover and research and evaluate. The models we described rather deal with API consuming audiences, as I said, and how they would like to see the information they need to be able to finish their tasks and how to reach their goals on the developer portal. But the question remains, what about the needs of your internal teams measuring their needs and how to improve those um, the, all things when needed. So it is hard to know about priorities and how to increase value. So yes, yet another model with three dimensions in order to align the different needs within an organization, both from a consumer's and a producer's point of view. And this model was created by Christoph Phantom. So um, the question is, why do API programs sometimes fail? Well, there are quite some misinterpretations on what an API program could mean when there are false expectations that lead to failure or stand still. API teams, for example, might put too much focus on technology and miss out on success, for example, by not focusing on writing content or not doing that enough or outlining user journeys, but by focusing too much on the features alone. An IT department might not see the need for more APIs because they feel that there are enough integrations already. And uh, business stakeholders 
might not necessarily understand the full potential of that APIs can deliver and rather look for quick income. But let's be clear, all three might benefit from an API program. But how to make an API program successful in the eyes of all stakeholders? How can you provide one single model and a means to measure that value? Well, we think that there are three dimensions to this model, the operation matu operational maturity, developer experience, and the business alignment dimensions. Operational, ma operational maturity is about the following. Can all authors in your company contribute easily to the developer portal? For example, can a developer or a business user write, write constant, content easily? And the other thing is, does your portal enable the necessary business processes? Is it easy to operate your API program through the portal? For example, if you monetize your APIs, do you use the full potential of the portal for this? For example, through a developer dashboard that not only connects all the information about a specific user and for a specific user, but also recommends next steps. Developer experience is about how well you serve your audiences and about removing as much friction as possible to avoid frustration while working with the APIs. Trust signals are important to help decide that investment in your APIs is a good choice. And then business alignment, the third dimension, is about the following questions. Is the developer portal an IT solution to help execute on your API program? Or would you like to enable more than coding alone? And the other question is, how well does your developer portal play with your business strategy? For example, does it create business opportunities and not only technical solutions? So these are the three independent dimensions that an organization can work on to improve the business value of their developer portal. To some extent, developer portals can evolve from MVP to maturity along one of these dimensions, while still lagging behind on the other two. For maximum business value, however, you will need to work on all three, the operational maturity, the developer experience, and the business alignment. So how does it all work in practice? I'd like to point out that we are still developing this moment, this model. So give us your feedback, please, if you have any. But on the following slides, we'll list the most important questions and elements that we think mark these three dimensions. So first of all, operational maturity. So content is, of course, the backbone of your developer portal. But providing all the necessary content can be hard. Your internal stakeholders need to be able to write, publish, and change documentation whenever necessary. And we distinguish between three kinds of authors, the developers, the business stakeholders, and the technical writers. Operational maturity is about how the portal addresses the needs of all these three. Can they write, publish, and change content as they would like to? Then the developers. Motivate your developers to write, so make sure they don't need to switch context when writing docs. For example, by using a CI-CD process to submit reference documentation to the developer portal. A developer portal remains a business tool. Also product owners, marketing and salespeople, but also stakeholders that deal with developer relations should be able to adjust content to the portal on the portal without having to follow a developer-centric workflow that might cause frustration and slow down their work, or even slow down the whole process of publishing an API with all the necessary information around it. It is very important to avoid bottlenecks. A CMS, a content management system, can provide a solution here to rapidly iterate on business documentation, like, for example, landing pages. And then technical writers, they are essential for a mature API program. They can help to structure and connect all of the available documentation and create docs that combine the APIs into business building blocks. But there are some caveats. Rather than doing too much and making things overly complicated, it is important to adjust existing tool chains to enable the best authoring experiences possible. One of the failure states that we see when teams build developer portals is when they pick one authoring experience and make everyone follow that one. 
The next developer experience. We've covered the topic before and think that the main questions are the following. How easy is it for API consumers to use your APIs? Do you reduce friction as much as possible? And do you improve on trust whenever you can? Well, a little more on the friction and trust topic. Allow users to evaluate what you provide. For example, that a user will be able to use the APIs over a long period of time and that there is stability. But also take care of the reciprocity principle giving something before you ask or you take. If you ask your users for personal data, even their email address, make sure that you give them something in return and best beforehand. For example, by providing API tryout sections and code examples so that they can evaluate what they are going to use. And last but not least, exhaustive docs and troubleshooting options take away frustration when there is a task at hand. Over to business alignment. How do you go beyond your APIs just being technology? And how do you go above one size fits all portals so that you can create value for different audiences? Is a developer portal a technology solution or part or of your business strategy? And what do you want to gain in the long run? Have you adapted your developer portal to your business needs or do you just need a flat list of APIs? Talking, um, talking about creating value, one size does not fit all. Your audiences is, expect different kinds of content as their goals on the developer portal differ. You can do this by providing different sections or entry points for each group of users. For example, two weeks ago on the Developer Portal Awards, the Mercedes-Benz Developer Portal was praised for doing this in a splendid way for the consuming developers and the consuming business users. Regarding business strategy, it's important to decide how you will go beyond your developer portal as a technical solution. How will you get senior management excited about your developer portal beyond it helping your developers? We need to adjust developer portals to the requirements and the goals we are trying to achieve. So although we said developer portals can score differently on maturity with regard to the three dimensions, for example, a developer portal can evolve quicker in one dimension, dimension and stay behind on the other two. It's best that portals move on gradually and mostly take the three dimensions into account at each major step. So let's, look, let's have a look at those steps, the stages and levels, and what we would expect the operational maturity, the X and business alignment dimensions to look like. At level one, a company starts using APIs. Developer portal is a project. It is part of an API rollout that project team has been assigned to create the API documentation site to help promote your APIs. The bare minimum documentation has been created by the API developers and the API team lead has done their best to create a few business documentation pages. There is, however, no process or plan to update the documentation. There is no technical writer on the team who will iterate on the content to start improving the developer experience. As said, documentation is available, for example, through email or in a PDF format. The organization behind the developer portal is like a warehouse that stores material and that you as a user can retrieve, at least somehow and somewhere. At level two, a company or organization starts treating APIs as products with their own budget. A decision has been made to start an API program. They know that a developer portal and its a uh, developer experience will be a key factor to the success of the API program. The API, API program team has people dedicated to the developer portal. Technical writers and the UX team are working on the information architecture of the developer portal to improve the content and the overall DX step by step. You are aware of the need for both business and technical documentation and you have set up a process that enables people from around the organization to contribute. Regarding DX, the user can get somewhere and doesn't necessarily need help from developer port provider to get something done. The developer is as a marketplace with valuable assets as the APIs are treated as products that add value. Level three is about starting to scale for API usage. Developer portal functions as a critical business infrastructure. As a company, you need to make sure that internal people can use developer portal in a sophisticated way to easily publish their documentation. People from all parts of the organization will collaborate 
to, with the developer pro uh, product team to iterate on business and technical content. Successful API product teams will iterate on their parts of developer portal, user journeys will be enabled, et cetera, et cetera. The full so uh, life cycle of DX is worked out, both downstream and upstream. There's also aftercare. The idea be behind the high street with boutique shops is that there are different sections in your developer portal that target different experiences where you can do different things, where you bring together different APIs to achieve new outcomes. And now a short intermezzo about interfaces, um, but for a more detail, detailed introduction, I'd like to, I like to refer back to Christoph's presentation and slot before. So interfaces make it easier to use services you want to provide as a business. Um, they will enable and create opportunities for users. And some examples are, of course, the APIs, but also SDKs, apps, etc. SDKs might, as a complete workshop in a specific coding language, be easier to use than APIs in some cases. Third-party apps can provide immediate solutions, and QR codes can enable small businesses without a developer to make use of a solution they need. And KBC, a Belgian bank, provides some solutions on how to do this in practice. The more you democratize your developer portal, the larger the return on investment will be. Consequently, your developer portal will turn into a business solution portal. You will make technical oriented solutions more practical and actionable for a whole new range of users this way. And the more interfaces you provide, the more users you will be able to attract. That brings us to level four of the maturity model. How can you turn your developer portal in an interface discovery tool. Imagine that developers start using your APIs and tell you what you could be doing, how, and uh, what you could start providing as extras, what interfaces you could provide for that. That could bring in new ideas and you will have new business opportunities. When we democratize DX, we'll have DX beyond APIs. The question here is on how to serve business developers not only the software developers, but also the business developers, the people who are designing business flows and automation within the business. And then the final one, how do you create a holistic model for all the interfaces that you have? We've come to the conclusions. There are a few crucial elements where we want to measure maturity. Let's think, and Christoph said this too, but I think it's really important. Let's think of developers as pioneers. They can be the first to use new solutions and they can show you the way to new possibilities. And APIs are exploration devi devices that help to explore opportunities, how to make the life of your stakeholders easier and speed up processes. We need to take care of consumers and producers alike, create value for both and reduce friction during their user journeys and their workflows. And regarding business needs, how can you democratize your developer portal and enable solutions consequently? That's the main question. So thank you. I hope that I could provide you with some ways on how to measure how your developer portaling is doing and how mature it is at the moment. But I hope this presentation also helped you to find out how the characteristics of your current situation and show you the next steps to take. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, uh, it, we, good on time. Uh, we've got a little, a few more minutes uh, for for a few questions, or maybe one question for Wally. Um, uh, very practical. Um, there was one question from the audience. Where was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, from Stefano. If you could um, share the models uh, that you were mentioning, the other models that uh, uh, for maturity. I, I, do we already have a blog post about this or not yet? No, we no. don't. And, and uh, I, I realized I had, um, I had outlined them much more in detail, but there wasn't enough time to talk about them in more detail because yeah, th those are interesting models as well, of yeah. course. Maybe maybe something we can talk about with Delany uh, to to produce something, yeah. and then we can put it also on our newsletter. Yeah. Yeah, I will share the slides. Um, um, uh, the slides. I will share the links to those models here in the in the chat. Okay. Um, so I had. Um, let's see. Well, the, the most fun one. Um, <laughs> I, you. you a little bit of <laughs> you, no, so thank thank you for the presentation. Uh, I think you really did a really awesome job. You you took the ideas and took them a lot further. Um, 
So um, I, I wanted to ask about the Developer Portal Awards because you mentioned yeah. that, um, what was the most surprising thing that you've seen on the awards uh, this year? Mm -hmm. I think the very important thing was that um, people do take care of their audiences so that they are not only focusing on uh, technology and, and mm -hmm. how to make sure that everything works from that point of view, but also that everything starts with the people who are using your portal and to make their lives easier. And for example, um, the overall best portal went to um, Mercedes-Benz who did who does a splendid job at addressing their target audiences right away from the beginning on and uh, provide separate sections for, for them to yeah. make sure that they, they find their way easily and, and find the content that they need. Yeah, thank you. I, I think that's um, that's the, the funny thing is that that's not really about technology. It's a, it's more about content and thinking about your audiences. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. So, thank you very much uh, for doing this talk and and for the work you did on preparing it. Uh, and um, yeah, thank you for the ideas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks. See you. See you.